Yeah, okay. Um, I guess I'm going to be running the meeting tonight. Uh, Mr. Parker Destin is uh, fashionably late, and uh, the fact is he may have turned this over to me anyway. Um, anyway, I was hoping that was him coming through the door, but I guess not. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, do we want to do the invocation now or wait till the regular council meeting? Do it now. Uh, huh? I'm okay with doing it later. Why don't we go ahead and stand and do a moment of silence and then pledge? Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes for July 2nd, 2018 so uh, City Council meeting. Second. Second. All those say aye, I guess. Aye. aye. Any nays? Good. All right, what I have here next is a questions and answer session with the Restore Act uh, coordinator and um, if you could come on up ma'am and I, I would like you if you could to, to come on up and maybe stay up front here in case some questions go back and forth and um, and if you would just maybe just pull yourself up a seat there at the table and, and uh, join these good people and um, I think where we were from everything that I've seen in the, the last couple of months is we've tried to determine whether or not by us possibly possibly de delaying this by adding things or changing things and we're talking about right now the park that we have in, in on uh, harbor boulevard right now yeah. and um we we want to make sure that we're not doing anything to to influence the money that we would get but we want to make sure that when we do it we do it like everybody would like to see it so i think that we've been told well i know that we've been told many times that if we don't have something by a certain time that we could lose the funding for this park and and i've heard that many many times and and i kind of we wanted to bring you here tonight to kind of maybe set the record straight on some of that but then to maybe bounce some ideas or concerns or questions that we may have off of you and let you tell us what you know about everything that's going on um you know and with that um, do you have, I know you have a presentation and, and would you like to go through that and then maybe take some questions or, or would you like to answer some questions up front or, and I'm not sure that we got questions to be honest with you. Well, but, let's start yeah. through the presentation. Okay, let's do the presentation. All right, well, my name is Jane Evans and I'm the Grants and Restore Manager for Okaloosa County. Yes, how about that? All right, um, I live in unincorporated Okaloosa County, but I vote in this building. So I'm, I'm very proud of you to ask me here tonight to, to go over the information. I live this, so um, we're going to do this. Okay. The, this is the direct component process. Remember, pot one was the direct component funds. Um, let's go through that. Um, under the Restore Act and Treasury's regulations, um, only the following entities may apply for funding under the announcement. 
of the Florida counties, Okaloosa was included in that. So Okaloosa County is the applicant for the funds and is the award recipient. Okay, so that's according to the act. Okay, as of April 9th of 2018, Okaloosa County has net allocations available of 11,103,517.52. And additional allocations will be received through 2031. So to answer your question about are you going to lose the money? Well, eventually in 2031, but right now you have money set aside on, um, for those two destined projects. Um, as of June 30th, 2017, the United States Department of Treasury accepted Okaloosa County's initial multi-year implementation plan, phase one. That's the ORAC committee um, did the projects and it came down to the initial multi-year implementation plan, phase one, for 5,365,902.39. And, the, the, and I will call this the plan. Uh, it included the City of Destin projects, which totaled 1,916,448.50, which was approximately 35% of that total on the plan, okay, the, the two projects. Right. Oops. So the City of Destin's approved projects on the plan is the Clement Taylor Park restoration, which is 729 9, and in the direct component, you have eligible activities. And the, eligible, the primary eligible activity for that project was the promotion of tourism in Gulf Coast region, including recreational fishing. And it had other applicable activities, which was not the prime one, which was promotion of the consumption of seafood harvested from the Gulf Coast region. All right, the other project was the Captain Royal Melvin Heritage Park and Plaza for 1,216,530.33. That primary activity was promotion of tourism as the other. Uh, with this, the other related eligible activities was infrastructure projects benefiting the economy or ecological resources, including port infrastructures, and promotion of consumption of seafood harvested from the Gulf Coast region. All right. Okay, so what if Destin wants to modify one of those projects? You know, that the project on the plan right now is the one that was originally submitted to ORAC, went through the process, went through out for the 45-day review, was approved, sent to Treasury, and accepted by Treasury. Now, what if you want to modify one of those? Treasury, in their frequently asked questions, talks about you can have material changes and non-material changes. A material modification to the plan is a change in the scope or size of the activity that affects the outcome or outputs. What did, where you said you were going to do, did that change? Um, do you change in the grant funds resulting from additional, addition of a new activity or change in the scope or the size of the existing activity? What was written up? If a non-material change, the examples, minor changes to the scope, including outcomes or outputs, um, major changes to the budget activity, and if you change the proposed beginning and ending date. So as long as it's before the end of the act. Right. Material modifications, what does that mean? That means that you're going to have to amend the plan. The plan that was accepted will be uh, materially modified. So what you would have to do to do an amendment is that the city of Destin, you guys would have to come up with what, what do you want to propose to do as the project? Um, and the plan encompasses a write-up of the narrative, um, including what eligible activity it's related to. Um, there's a matrix, which is matrix, which is essentially be, your being, beginning and ending date and how much you need from the direct component if you're going to add other funds and what your total project in the name of the project. And then a map. Those three things are the plan. Okay, so you would have to do that, um, submit it to the county because, you know, as the recipient, we would have to file it. Um, and then I would have to go to um, the Board of County Commissioners to ask them to go out for a 45-day review. Okay, I go out for the 45-day review, we get public comments, which was done in the ORAC process also. Um, then when I come back, I take those comments and add them to that narrative and then becomes the final project. Now, um, I'm thinking that once we get those projects, 
I can come back to you guys to approve it or not approve it at that point. That's up to you guys. Um, then once you guys sign off on it, it's going to go to the Board of County Commissioners for their review and final decision to approve or disapprove. Okay. Um, then it goes to Treasury and then Treasury has a final review and then that's when they give their acceptance of the project based on its merits. Okay. You got a question? Yes, uh, I do. <clears throat> Whenever you, w the, the process you just mentioned would have to be done either way. When we get finished with the design of it, even if it was going like it was going, the, the, the process would not change. Is that right? If you make a material modification, we have to go back and, and amend the plan. Once you go through the process I just said, then you're, and it's accepted by Treasury, then you go to where you are right now, and that's getting the application ready to submit. Okay. You know, the, the plan's kind of like a pre-application. Once that's accepted, then you go to application. Okay, who would decide whether or not it's a material modification? Would it be a cost issue? Would it be a, well, give you an example, at the park that we're talking about, the Royal Melbourne Heritage Park, it was brought to our concern about the possibility of killing some oak trees. Instead of sloping it down, we decided to look at the possibility of leaving the slope as tall as we can and doing some switchbacks to be able to accommodate um, handicapped uh, people. And then to maybe move a bandstand around from one place to another or something like that. But it was, in my opinion, in the overall project, it wasn't a big deviation, but now it, is there what would make it a material deviation from the plans well ultimately treasury decides but um if you were going to move if you had an output and you were going to move it from one place to the other you're still going to have that output that outcome so if you're going to change your outcome then that that would be a material modification okay the outcome people would still get down to the water, but is that the outcome you're talking about? Or are we talking about less people or the, how it looks, how it's presented today? Well, is it's, that? It's all gonna be how it's written up. Mm. Okay. So. All right. But, but you know, you use your judgment. Is that, is, if we said we were going to do this, is this a material change from what we said we were going to do? I have a question. Toby. Meaning park me it boils down to is it a park or not a park if it's still going to be a park I don't know that's just sort of what I'm taking Councilwoman Rams well I think when you and I talk Jane uh, it'd be like restrooms if the original design has restrooms on it and you cut the restrooms out of the park that would be a material change because no longer are there restrooms available uh, so if you don't cut down one tree you do cut down one tree that's not material so there's a wide gulf in between the two so i think on the it's from the, from just the sounds of, of things i think that on the royal melvage melvin heritage park i think that the changes are not material but we'll, there's another park that we're kind of talking about and those changes could be material and so that may be neat where we need to go um, mr green go ahead I was just going to state by the description she gave to me what I interpreted that we're not changing the size or scope we're changing the design so to me this would be a non-material change and by what the the presentation just said in my book and ma'am is that correct that a redesign because we're not we're basically moving stuff around and not taking stuff away not changing the size or the scope of the actual project of how many people can occupy it or what its purpose is intended for You know, it's hard to actually say until you actually see it. But if you moved a bathroom from one end of the park to the other, you still have the bathroom. If you take it away, you've changed your outcome. I would think on this particular park that we really haven't gotten into the uh, major changes that may, you know, prompt that. But I can't say that because, it, you know, it, it kind of seems a little bit out there as far as what would make it. But um, um, does any, go ahead, Mr. Buckingham. Yes, my question is, is this process, what, what I'm getting out of this, it sounds like this is after the plans have been approved 100%. Is that correct? Well, the project that was presented to ORIC is what has been accepted by Treasury. 
so that was the project that was vetted and through that process so you'll be working from that project wait i'm understanding it and i could be wrong this process is meant to be once we have submitted the final plans that this is what we're doing but we haven't done that yet correct this would be well, the, after we submitted the final we the, haven't done that. The, the plans the original plans i think have been submitted but i don't know that we can't make deviations to the plans. correct but, correct yeah mr braden that was kind of my question what plans were submitted and who submitted them and who approved them where they even come from The, gosh, I don't know the date of the ORAC, but, but someone from the city of Destin presented two projects to the ORAC committee. And that is what um, the ORAC committee had a point system and um, went through an extensive process um, to select projects to go forward to Treasury. So there, there was some so kind was, of a design that was submitted. There was a narrative, a matrix, and a map, and then information that was submitted to the ORAC on that project. Okay, so basically what you're saying is not, not the design wasn't submitted, actually submitted. Basically what it was is the paperwork, a site plan, a, um, a, probably a legal description of the property, a general narrative as to what the property was going to be utilized for, but not the actual drawings of even 60% uh, or the 90% plans have not been submitted as we hear now. I think someone on your staff be glad to take that answer from anybody. I think I can help some. I may have to call on some other staff, but I've been involved pretty much from the beginning when Lindy Chabot was still with the city um, and running our grants program. She did the narratives for us. Um, and then as far as the parks go, um, she wrote all the descriptions as to what we intended to do or what we would like to do with the money if it was awarded. And then there were some conceptual drawings and very rough conceptual drawings if we got the money, what, how that money would be spent. That, that's... Okay, so not, just to make sure we're, I'm clear on this, not any of the conceptual drawings or any of the anything that we have done so far has been submitted to the county or to the state or to the government anybody right well that information is what oric made their um, decision on and then the narrative correlated to that project oh i'm talking about the actual design of the project the, the, the yeah, plans have not been sent okay so nobody has gotten the plans other than the the, the city and uh so no those plans have not been submitted to anybody yet right the, i don't think the plans were with that that's right to the best of my knowledge all right because the reason i'm the reason i'm saying this is because basically we've been told that that um and i'm not believe me i'm not chastising anybody but i've heard it you can't change the design. I've heard it probably 50 times now. You cannot change the design. And, um, you know, if, because they have been submitted. And so I'm thinking that now we, we really have not submitted those plans, but basically, anyway, Ms. Ramsell, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I believe it was our January, one of the first meetings we had in January. I believe the city manager mentioned at that time, and Mr. Campbell, I don't see him, um, was here, and they had discussed that they had sent the plans and the full application to the county, but I think they referred to it at the time as the federal treasury, and they had said that had been done in December. So I'm wondering now, were plans sent? Were they not sent? Does anyone have an answer? Because now it's sounding like plans weren't sent if it's just a narrative. I think that's the next slide. Ah, so, nice segue. Okay. Application <laughs> timeline and process. All right, so, so once one of the projects is ready to be submitted, 
we um, we go into grant solution the system that um, Treasury's provided for the applications we go ahead and enter everything and then um, we can do a PDF of the application and that is what I had gone back and forth uh, with the city to um, then send it to John Stutz our program manager at Treasury for a cursory review see if we left something out if something didn't match um, if there was a yes where there was a no not an explanation that type of thing so that when it was formally submitted that it wouldn't have that kind of a hiccup so, Mr. Mr. I'm sorry well I, I, that that should answer your question about whether it went to Treasury or not uh, it Mr. went Braden. by email yeah. but it wasn't the final submitted Gotcha. application gotcha. Yeah. it was with y'all and so y'all went through all your right processes. Mm -hmm. mr Braden, go ahead and ask your question i'm sorry so there was a design that was submitted to be approved the application there was, an app was provided by destin and that and then there was a design of some sort to this park it's like in blueprints no it's some there, there was had there's to be a description a description of some mm -hmm. kind of design so is that the description that we're talking about that, that we may be deviating from or adding to? That description in the application has to be uh, to, to match the original plan description, or you have to, to um, describe the difference. Okay, we need, or I need a copy of whatever design plan that is that was submitted. The application, um, uh, there's copies with the city of Destin. I sent it to them to, um, you know, okay it before I submitted it to John right. Stutz. And by the way, he never got to the point that he could review it before we told him to hold off. City so, manager, can you provide the council with whatever was submitted to the county, these designs or plans or whatever it was, so we know what we may or may not be deviating from? Absolutely. I mean, I just it seems like we've sure. been wasting a whole lot of time yeah. meeting in workshops and these guys designing something and we have no idea what was even submitted. It, Start we're talking with. about both parks, right? Is that uh, right now we're just talking about uh, Royal Melvin. Royal Melvin. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> you got Go ahead, question. Chad. Thank you for coming. Um, on the prior slide, you had the process for if we had a material modification, how to get that done. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, you have the 45-day review county approval and then submits to the Treasury. Mm -hmm. Who, what board is it the Treasury that determines whether it's material or non-material? Well, essentially, they have the final decision. If we were to send, if send something up and they thought and said it was non-material and they felt it was material, because remember, you have to describe any differences between the original um, narrative. So you have the ability to send it f to them to determine whether it's material or non-material before we go through that process. The right, I can send it to them, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that would, if they determine it's non-material, we've saved the 45-day process, the county mm -hmm. approval. Yeah, John Stutz, our program manager, uh, works very well with the counties. Sure. So. so so what she's given us in terms of the criteria of what's material, what's non-material, I don't think these changes are material. And so I am comfortable going forward making these modifications to Royal Melvin Heritage Park and then have Ms. Evans submit it to the Treasury to determine whether or not these changes are material. If they're non-material, we'll just go forward and submit it at the next rolling date you have right am i right yeah. yes yes i think and, and so, so. I, I think that wraps it up for royal melvin Heritage okay Park. is um are all the advisory committee members are they understanding what we're talking about here is everybody on council or i'm sorry the cra are they satisfied with okay i'm sorry you can continue i didn't mean to oh stop. no no you're fine um, all right, so after this preliminary application comes back, um, there may be comments, and then I get back with the city to clear these comments. Then we make the uh, final adjustments to the application. Um, then I assume they want you want to come back to the city 
council to approve the final draft of what goes to treasury um, and then we submitted uh, the application to the Board of County Commissioners for approval and electronic submission via this grant solution system. And one of the questions I think it had, that has come up is that the grant solutions um, has time periods. Like the next one is, is finished September 28th. They have to bring the system down to do maintenance, especially during these first few years when they've been tweaking the system for a month. So no that same application is going to come back up. So it's just a matter of 30 days when you can't actually hit the submit button. So, so that's just a timing thing with that system. All right. Are, are, okay. Have you got more? Are you, have you gotten more on more pages to go? Um, I have this one and the next one. Okay, go ahead. I, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, after uh, the application. Um, Treasury will actually have an award with Okaloosa County, and we will turn around and have a sub-award with the City of Destin um, as the sub-recipient. And my last slide is, I guess, a commercial uh, for the requirements while I'm here. Um, you know, once you actually uh, accept receiving this money, you've accepted changing your systems to the federal compliance. So you must comply with all the federal statutes, federal regulations, regulations, executive orders, office of management and budget circulars, standard terms and conditions, program specific terms and conditions, and any other special award conditions for the federal financial assistance. Um, we, you being a subrecipient, we are required by those federal statutes to do a risk assessment, and I, I have received the questionnaire for the risk assessment and all the information that I needed to, to do it, and it looks really good except for, uh, for um, uh, beefing up those purchasing policies for um, to be 2 CFR compliant because uh, federal regulations require certain things to be done for certain levels of spending uh, for uh, quotes or bids or um, competitive bids type thing. And um, so I believe you guys are working on that. Um, so that would be a special condition in the we we board. are working on that at mm -hmm. present in fact i think we had our first discussion about that at mm -hmm. our last city council meeting but we're working to okay. get that in order okay so um has anybody got any further questions on the the um royal melvage heritage park melvin heritage park any questions okay we'll move on to the park that's on calhoun avenue if that's okay and, uh -huh. Clement Taylor Park, yeah. <coughs> and basically discuss that a little bit. What has come to us, um, Ms. Evans, is that the fire district has came to us and asked us, could we consider the possibility of allowing them to build a small, a very small fire station on the uh, piece of property there known as Clement Taylor Park. Um, the way I understand it, it would be um, facing the property it would be the the <coughs> west side of the property of, of uh, on there basically where the restrooms are there now and what they had offered to do would be to build a fire station and then to build the restrooms onto the fire station and do some things that could be where it could be a benefit to the city and of course a benefit to the fire district and a benefit to the residents if they need the emergency services they provide. Mm -hmm. I do know just from your discussion just a little bit earlier that's going to be a material, material. modification. That's yes, right. I understand <laughs> Sounds that. Sounds like it. Yes. What um, you don't need to go back through the process, but do you <laughs> do you think that um, any of this could be considered the fact that we are basically improving our 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 um, readiness to support tourism maybe even a little bit there with that um, you know in fact that we do already through the TDC kick in some money mm -hmm. to help with some of the emergency stuff that goes on and could any of that be taken in consideration when we talk about this grant possibly helping with some of the tourist stuff that we talked about well I think that sounds like a good start of a write up of a narrative <laughs> um, so what you, what you would need to do is just come up with your, you know, consensus, your project. We can um, submit it uh, for 
a cursory review, uh, come back, um, and then go through the process is a material modification, those steps that we showed. Um, then you would go through the process. The worst thing that could happen, I guess, is that Treasury didn't accept it as an eligible activity. I'm not saying that they would or would not. But if they did, well, then you, you would still go back to what you originally have on your plan. So, you know, in doing this narrative, you could consider, you know, what is the eligible activity? Do you, um, you know, is there any other adjustments in the application that would need to be made? And since it's a material modification anyway, and then send that forward and, and, and see what they say. I, you know, I, I think that there were projects that the same thing happened with the ORIC process. So. Uh, the, the reason that they kind of wanted to try to be there is that they do have a like a 26, 27 foot fire boat and they wanted to be able to have it there to where they could access the water emergency mm -hmm. stuff a little quicker and and there has, it looks like to me there there is come a need for um, more fire protection on that end of town. Um, but, but anyway, um, it sounds like it's doable, but it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit harder. And what about the fact if we were to carve out that one section of property and submit it minus that one section of property that we would allow them to bid or allow them to build a fire station on? Well, I think you would do what the gentleman said. Is that would still be material, it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Present it uh, for a cursory review to find out Sure, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I probably know the answer to this, but what would happen if we accept the money, go forward, the park is planned now, how it's been preliminarily submitted, mm -hmm. and then after the park's completed, to go back and make an agreement with the fire district? Would we be breaching any kind of... Well, um, there are yeah. um, a few... Um, items that you should consider is that in construction um, that your building will have an estimated useful life uh, if you have a building um, and you will um, authorize project purposes during which time the recipient must not dispose of or encumber its title for other interests. Treasury retains an undividable equitable revisionary interest called the federal interest and the real property improved in whole or in part with the Restore Act funds for the estimated useful life of the project. And your estimated useful life is something that you and Treasury have to come to an agreement with before they will execute an award. That sounds like that is never on, on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, never I, I that we'll be I able to do it if we did it. So that, I told you I yeah, that. yeah, so, that sounds like never. So it mm -hmm. sounds like to me that if we are going to consider <laughs> something like this we have got to do it in um, up front stage mm -hmm. and do it just like you've described it and um anyways any comments or concerns from council or anybody else right now about it my concern would be that we would spend i, I don't know how much money we'll spend to redesign this park and then to submit it only to be told no it, to me, it seems like we're risking. But if it's not a big expense, if the fire department would be willing to help us offset that expense by pitching in for the design, I'd be willing to take the risk, and depending on the cost. But it is going to cost us some money to redesign the park. If we do that, go through the submittal process, and the Treasury rejects it, then we're back to square one, and we've wasted some money. So that's my only hesitation. All right, I tell you what, we probably... To a material change, not with Royal Melvin Heritage Park. And what, probably what we need to do is have the city manager, um, Mr. Destin, um, and um, some representative from the fire district or whatever to sit down, go over this stuff, come tell us exactly what it is they want, uh, and then bring that to us and let us look at it go ahead and put it forward like that and see how it comes out and, and see if it's even a possibility. They may tell us no just by glancing at it or was, something. Was so. this part done by Bomar Tetratech too? Different company? Yeah, it was done by our continuing services contractor. I don't have his name That's right fine. here. I, I think um, 
the, the good news is probably I don't think we're modifying any existing buildings. Those bathrooms are being demolished and going to the north end of the park, I think. I was told that they were possibly going to be portable bathrooms or something like that. Yeah, is that I, true? No. Um, I understand the confusion. Of, um, they're pre-built, so they come in they're and they, they're set in place on a slab, so it's a very fast process. But normal plumbing? And, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, I think we all know what we're looking at. I think we all know that if we want to um, do this thing with the 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 fire department is a possibility and that we will maybe work with as i said mr mr destin um um who is the chair of the the uh, fire district now mr moore and um you know the, the somebody from the city to to sit down um, and when i say the city engineer whatever it may be city manager and sit down and see what you can come up with and and bring it back to us would that be all right that's fine by me all right, have we any more questions about any of the two projects that we've talked about here tonight? My only Dixon. comment is about the um, Taylor um, Park. Um, since how we have spent an enormous amount of money on designing the Royal Melbourne, I think Clement Taylor needs to go out for bid, for drawing some plans, designing that park. You're saying you don't like the current design? Yeah, but is that, is that the design that's going to be submitted? The one we saw about a month ago? Yes. That's the one that's been preliminarily submitted, I believe. So, yes. I, okay. I, I, I would assume so. Okay, that's fine. Mr. All right, Mr. Burns, go ahead. I, I was in the back room talking to the mayor uh, at the start of the meeting. Uh, did y'all address the outstanding issue of getting a quote back from Tetra Tech? Because I believe that was covered extensively at the last meeting. No, um, um, and I was going to bring that up, and I'm glad you reminded me because I almost forgot it. Where are we? Have we? Did, I asked at the last city council meeting, I believe it was, to give me a number of where we are today in the design of uh, the. Uh, uh, Royal Melvin, Melvin Heritage Park uh, and how much money we've spent so far in the design of that. Do we have any idea yet how much money we're talking about? We'll have to bring that back to you. All right. Uh, nobody remembers that being asked for at the last meeting? We made a motion. I remember that. That was a motion being made? Yeah. All right, Mr. Buckingham, go ahead. Yes, sir. In our meeting on July 11th, the question was asked um, to uh, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Smith said that they are talking about the total redesign of the park. When they've started this 10 years ago, it's been about 160,000 so far. All right, I really hadn't wanted to say this, but. The last thing I saw from this previous city manager before she left was a number that was almost $300,000. Almost $300,000 to design a 68 foot wide Pete park. Uh, and, and, you know, here we are um, talking about the possibility of trying to get them to provide us with some numbers on change orders. I feel ridiculous. But anyway, that's the number I was trying to get at, and that's from what I saw. We are about three hundred thousand dollars in design work at this park. That is way too much. All right. Um, anybody have any questions or comments or anything about anything tonight? Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to get a little clarification on Clement Taylor Park and and what you want us to bring back to you. Do you, you don't want a formal formal drawings so just a, a concept drawing no right? I don't even need a concept drawing what I need is a concept we, okay. we just need to sit down with the fire district and with mr. Destin and come up with something that you can bring forward to us as a recommendation <laughs> very good thank you go ahead mr. break city manager when can we expect to have that number brought back 
the amount that's been spent on design this park. Broken down by year, please, which was in the last motion. I'm yes. going to defer to Mr. Schmidt. Yep. Um, we've basically asked them for a comprehensive estimate and given actually given them the uh, the list of potential changes that were recommended, and uh, I, that was. We're uh, not, I, I, Mr. Former. I mean, I'm sure you can go in there and see the checks cut to Tetra Tech over the past however yeah. many years we've yeah, been going through this process. It's not telling you, I already, already did that. On. It's right at three hundred thousand. Go ahead. Well, yeah, but I, I'd like to see it in a yearly breakdown. And I we, understand. We Everybody wants to see it, but, but of, uh, it, it is almost three hundred thousand dollars. So, um, you know, with that, is there any more questions? Or Robin doesn't have an answer. I'm We're sorry. Do you, see that. do you have you have a question, Mr. Braden? Well, his question yeah, was, "When are we going to see that?" See oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, can you? Are we going to see that next? What? When? Absolutely, by the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, Teresa A. Bear, I'm the committee chair of the Parks and Recreation Committee. And if, you know, we're redesigning this Clement Taylor Park. Um, currently, where they were going to put the bathrooms, these preset bathrooms, we're going to go on that slab. If it's redesigned, there's a magnolia tree that will have to be cut down and about 17 other trees to accommodate that side of the park. Has anyone taken that into account? This will we'll be taken into consideration when I sit down with the fire district. Trust me, the last thing I want to see is any trees harmed, especially over at uh, Calhoun Park, which is basically some of the last heirloom trees we've got. So definitely be it'll be on the forefront of my discussions with them. Thank you. Any other member of public? Come on up, Mr. Mayor. Please. <laughs> just for the public consumption, I just want to be a public record. I have a couple questions <clears throat> as a member of the community. Um, oh. Yeah. Here you go. All right. Um, I really tried to follow um, what Miss Evans was saying and. I think the confusion on my face probably looked just about like the confusion on y'all's faces as well. Um, so I just want to, um, on public record, just put a couple of uh, questions. Uh, does anyone know what will happen at this time after this presentation if they don't build a 90% plan that everybody was kind of confused what was submitted and approved by Treasury? So I just want to make sure that this CRA asks that question and find that answer. Second, a question I'd like for the CRA to ask itself is, will we have to reapply for a new grant to have Treasury approve a new plan? And then what is the risk of disapproval by the county commissioners or the Treasury? So I, I want to put that on public record that you guys find that answer. Um, if it's disapproved, then what's our recourse? I'm not sure who can answer these questions, but these are ones I think that need to be answered. So if it's disapproved, then what? And what will be the timeline to resubmit? And is there substantial risk of not getting funded? Or is it fundamentally sound that a new resubmitted plan will get funded and the park will be built? So those are the, the key questions that, that I think we, we need to find the answers to. And I'm not too sure that we got those answers today. And lastly, I want to know why the Parks and Recreational Advisory Panel isn't the advisory panel that's used to evaluate and recommend to the CRA anything that has to do with a park and recreation versus, in this particular case, the Harbor CRA is here representing the Heritage Park. And I do know that, that the uh, uh, Destin Park falls in that mixed-use area, but they're supposed to advise on redevelopment in that district, mainly business and in, in, in long-term um, concepts. We have an advisory panel of people that are focused on the parks and recreation, and I just kind of think that um, they probably ought to be the ones that are evaluating and looking at these things and submitting to the CRA these plans. And that's all I have to th say. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Ms. Evans, is it a possibility that if we do a minor change on the Heritage Park, that the whole thing could get thrown out? If we did a minor deviation of the Heritage, I'm sorry. You, uh, oh, no, that's okay. Yeah. Your two parks are on the plan for sure, okay, to go forward as they were written. So you're not going to lose that. So, but you have to file the application, more specific application with uh, of the same nature that was approved in the plan. Okay, so basically we're not in jeopardy of having to resubmit and reapply for and stand in line with all the other people that are trying to get these grants. This money is secure. Right. We're right. going to get this money. If, but, if you look on our website, it, it's got the yeah. names of the park destined with those amounts. As long as we do not materially violate the, mm -hmm. the, the things that we've talked about here tonight. Okay. Right. Does that answer the question? I think part of the answer to the question. Um, the, the next thing is, is that um, will this in any way, um, it's going to go through the cycle, it doesn't matter, and if it doesn't make this cycle, it's going to make the next cycle, right. it, and that's just the way that that's, the business is conducted. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do about that. So right. basically, whenever we submit for it, we will get it either in the, that cycle or the next cycle. So it shouldn't. Yeah, before 2031. Yeah, as long as we <laughs> submit it and get everything together before 2031, we're pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we can make that date. But I'm not positive, i got to tell you. So, <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So those, that answered, I think, some of the questions that the mayor had. And, you know, he can certainly, when he gets us up here, say more if he wants to. Um, are, were you finished? I'm sorry, Ms. Evans. I'm fine. I just wanted to thank you for having me Thank here. you so much for being here. And there may be more questions. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Jones. On her, when she was discussing that, she had on there that there was an ending date. Is there, was there an ending date uh, in, the, in the proposal that went? <clears throat> None other than the how long the act is going to last. There, there, and there may have been a start date and an end date on those original MYPs, but I think as time went on and they learned that the process wasn't as, you know, as quick as they had hoped, then those dates changed. So when we go to do the application, we can put our best guess of what when you want to start and when you want to end, um, but. You know, like I said, that's a minor change. The beginning and any date's a minor change. So. Real quick, Council, Council Member Dixon. Go ahead. Uh, can she be excused from the Council meeting later because we had put her on both because she had a Absolutely. Thank, so, you. thank you so much for coming and doing this for us. We certainly Anytime. do appreciate it. And thank you for all the information. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. Any member of the Harbor CRA Advisory Committee got anything they'd like to add? Go ahead, Mr. Green. Um, I just want I mean, so you wanted to add to that discussion or you want to talk about the motions or? Uh, what, did you want to make a motion? What, what is it? Go ahead and answer your question. No, I was, I, I'm just, you know, we seem to be going through it and that presentation took a while and I know we have X amount of time before your council starts, but did you want to go through the motions or is there? Well, I think basically the, the what, do you, what do you mean the motions? I'm sorry. The, the recommendations, I should say. Oh, um, it's it's it's. Go ahead, go ahead, do your thing. Okay, first, first our minutes were sent out um, from our last meeting with not an approval. So, this board has not been able to approve the minutes as been presented to you all yet, which is a little surprising to me. With that said, if y'all don't mind taking two minutes and allowing this board to take a vote on the minutes, then I feel that it would be good for us to discuss it real quick, if that's possible. Hold, hold on one second here. Me, Mr. Turning, is that? It, it's fine, and also the time limit, uh, you know, as long as you don't start the council meeting before six, the meeting can run over, so you're not okay, really on a time timeline unless they want to cut you all off early, too. So all right. And uh, so go ahead, do your thing. Okay, uh, I would like to, uh, to bring to the board to the minutes of the uh, July 2011, or July 11, 2018, at 5.30, the minutes for approval. I move 
I got a first, I got a second. Any questions regarding the minutes? All in favor of the minutes? Aye. Okay, I feel, feel good we can go ahead and discuss. If you would like to, Jim, talk about your motions right here, it'd be great. Yeah. I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this again. And, you know, I really wanted to open it up because I wanted to see if you had any questions for me on these minutes. I mean, I tried to make them as plain as I could and real decisive, and I didn't know if there was anything that you had concerns with. I mean, I made most of them, so I know I like them, but I wanted to make sure that you didn't need rationale or what the objective was with some of them. Or Can you go through them in brief, just each point? So the, uh, one of the motions was uh, to recommend to the CRA board. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Was to recommend that the handicapped parking preferably be moved to either the either willing adjacent property owner or across the street from uh, in the Marler lot. Uh, we had an extensive discussion. I know that I believe uh, Councilman Morgan talked about it at our last joint meeting about it and. When we started, when we went back to dive into this, we, we decided since the city council or the CRA boards already discussed some pedestrian parks and stuff like that, to just kind of give it to you. I mean, you know, if we're talking about redesigning and we're not happy with the way things are, it seemed like it was a little point of contention between us, and we just and I just kind of tried to get everyone to pass it on, and, and uh, that that vote went unanimously to give it back to y'all to decide we one way or the other parking on that side or not to us it wasn't something that needed to hold up the, the redesign or all our right vision. let's let's do them one at a time council's pleasure on this well we would have to um have the ordinance brought back to us um that that was originally brought to us but with miss Bryla and miss lejeune gone be quite a delay, but I'm willing to have the discussion. Y'all know my thoughts on, on pedestrian only parks. I have no problem with them. Everybody willing to talk about that in a future date? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we just wanted to move on to the meat of it. Uh, next, there was a motion. I made a motion to recommend that the sidewalk above the bluff grade be moved to minimally affect an existing tree on the property or adjacent properties uh, seconded by the chairman and you know that was basically we wanted to us and in the in this motion was passed in, as the second one but it kind of go went with the vision of what I was going for which you will see keeps the bluff in place so by not having to create the the, the grading down to it as the sidewalk went down we could basically move the sidewalk wherever we wanted in the park and it wouldn't affect any of the trees by retaining the bluff everybody on the council understand that does anybody have a problem with that good thank you next uh, I recommended that the bluff be maintained and that a gradual ramp be constructed along the west property line all the way down to the harbor boardwalk allowing if there was a need for a switchback to run parallel I said perpendicular I, I misspoke but the notes are correct but I meant parallel back up and make a switch back going north and south along the west property line uh, that would also give us a chance if there was a switch back there would be another observation platform to look over the harbor and the harbor boardwalk right there so the motion was to run that down the west property line where the the existing driveway is and basically you would remove the driveway and and have the sidewalk come over to the west property line as it gets to the bluff and then have a switch back going down the west property line possibly coming back north and dumping the people out in the middle of the lower level and that was to you know aid in keeping the bluff there but also maybe have another lookout point uh, i know part of the the grant or the requirement was to have a observation platform this could be another observation platform Okay, I don't, 
we we didn't really get to down to the exactly where the switchbacks and stuff were going to go. I we I don't care, you know, as far as neither, we can get it. Go ahead. Neither do I, but I believe the way this is going to have to work is we're going to have to convey their wishes, our wishes, whatever we agree on to Tetra Tech or somebody to redesign this. I understand, but, but we're going to need. For, what's that? I understand, but what we need to do is get them all, and then we're going to need to do a motion to on each one of these. Do we need to be doing it as we go, you think? Or, or? No, you'll do the motion actually in the next meeting. Okay. But right. go ahead and keep, I'm keeping track right now. You said yes okay. to all the, uh, okay. you say no to any of them. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen any no's yet on anything. And any council member is welcome to speak up at any time. Board member right now, I'm sorry. All right, go ahead, Mr. Green. Thank you. Uh, my next motion was to recommend that the bathrooms in the resource room stay on the lower level on the southern part of the property and be incorporated into the bluff. And by doing that, when we went into further discussion, what I was speaking of the right now, the proper, the, the building, the bathrooms and stuff, that building runs down the east property line and it's a, linearly, it's longer north and south. And what I'm speaking of doing is turning it east and west and pushing it into the bluff. I know uh, Mr. Schmidt made comment that there's a, a flood line there that's not very far from where the actual bulkhead is now, but that we, and I know that it's close, but it can be doable, but we might get into the bluff some, but we go into the bluff with the building to where we don't go past that that flood zone line and we stay where we're in that same zone we're in, but we just turn the building to where it runs along the face of the bluff. Does any board member have a issue with that? Okay, so the, but the, t the top of it is still going to be for like the bandstand or whatever Correct. and access to the fishing museum and all the, all the bathrooms are still the same. So okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. That's the idea behind it. That vote went five to two. Uh, there was two members that, that dissented against it, but they, were, uh, they also had the purview, I believe, in the discussion that they would like to see the bathrooms move to the top, but they were of the minority on that motion. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, the next motion I'll, I'll do uh, the chairman made was to make the bathrooms uh, when the bathrooms are redesigned to fit the bluff that the bathrooms and the bandstand be facing due south and the shades of canopies which are part of the, the draw the last set of drawings we got uh, be be removed and put on top of the bandstand so that the that the the vista right now the stage slash observation platform instead of having uh, the design where the, the down the side of the building down the side of the property there was places to sit and have shade that that be reincorporated into the top of the observation deck that will now be pushed into the bluff and and run east and west instead of north and south okay any uh, board member have any issues with that what well, we're getting into the material changes here y'all better I, I, no, I, no. how many more motions you got yeah, a few uh, but to me they're all non-material all right they're sound awful issues. material to me come on with it uh the next motion uh was to recommend to incorporate more park elements into the uh, above bluff grade meaning that in the area where we're going to maintain the level on the upper part of the park that inst you know everything's been designed to have a sidewalk and a grade going down now we incorporate maybe park benches or picnic table or something along the top to where it's not just a path and grass and landscaping is the playground still in that or did they take that out they took that the playground's been it's taken not, out. it wasn't in the last set of drawings we saw so we're recommending to put it back so we're recommending it might not be a playground but that, and we leave that to your discretion but more park more park elements Keep going. The the chairman motion to recommend. If everybody it. would hold on one second, please come in and have a seat. Please hold it down. We got a meeting going on. Thank you, everybody. Go ahead, Mr. Green. Uh, the chairman uh, motion to recommend that if the estimates of the redesign of the park go over thirty thousand, that it gets sent out for rebid, and that was passed unanimously. Uh, if that goes over a lot less than that, probably. But go ahead. I'm sorry. So uh, the next motion was uh, to have by one of our members to recommend the CR Bay board look into uh, the lease agreement and the riparian rights of the submerged land lease. Uh, that passed unanimously. There was some discussion that's in the minutes of our meeting that some of her concerns, and she's not here, and I can't, I'm not going to try and convey her, her personal thoughts on that. 
but they are in the minutes and I looked at them and, and from what I can see the minutes were accurate to what her, she was trying to convey uh, the next motion wait a minute what is that what, what back up again what was that all okay. right we we last city council meeting um, just so you know um, if it's this very issue was brought up and this was turned down so um, you all can make a motion on it if you want but this has already been voted on up here so may I please sir yeah. okay we were supposed to have a meeting on August 8th to approve our minutes and go over our, our minutes at your last meeting yes you all did um, I'm not going to say turn it down but you all just kind of pushed it off the side for a minute prior to that meeting this board went um, and please I, I do have one question um, this board was put together by this council um, was appointed um, for a reason um, can one of y'all tell me what the reason why we're here please no but we're, we're here we're here to my understanding is to give you all good recommendations good thoughts um, kind of be the eyes in the back of your head on some of these bigger projects um, and give you what we feel is concerns and in issues um, and we did in depth go over that uh, with one of our members with the lease and we felt very strongly that it should be looked at and with this committee at seven to zero voting on it I was thinking that y'all would listen to us I think and it's just my personal opinion I am not you know council can do or say what they want to I think sometimes we go a little too far in the weeds and this may be one of the times that we've gone a little too far in the weeds um, this as you know is in court and um, the fact is is that um, the council's already basically taken this matter up and it was rejected so I I think that well I appreciate what you're doing and everything that all the committees do and and everything else that sometimes I think we get a little far in the weeds but it's a lot more to this issue than what y'all know probably and what a lot of people know so I don't know what good it would do but I am abstained from that the last time and I will abstain from that if it comes up again but I do know that that matter has been taken up up here already and it was not it was voted down to, to look at that so anyway that's just what I saw here at the last meeting any council member up here is welcome to come in on that as you want to and sir you know I have the utmost respect for you and I value your opinion but I think there's some things that definitely need to be looked at and that's on the record thank you come on all right so the last motion uh, that we that I made was to recommend to the CRB CRA board to extend the harbor CRA boundary to include the portion of Noriego point that was just or is in the process of being redeveloped uh, that that passed six to one in our in our in our uh, advisory committee and really and truly uh, it was brought up it was brought up by one of our members that it was brought up in the past to include that and it wasn't of course a lot has happened since then the city has taken ownership of it the project is partially completed uh, to us it's it's a big part of the harbor and a in a in a in a welcome part to redesign that point to to armor it and to and the, also the the commerce that it has helped safely create coming back around that point as far as navigating uh, big boats fishing boats pontoon rental boats everything that has to use that it's it's really helped bring more attention to the Destin Harbor so you know that was a recommendation by us to to include that into our into our district what does the board members think um, the, only, the only thing I would ask is um, I think I'd like to hear something from the Parks and Rec Department on that and I'd like to hear something from the Parks and Rec Committee on that it's a park so um, I think they've already expressed their opinion that maybe they're getting kind of turned out or turned down or 
left out of the picture on some of these things. So maybe I'd like to hear from them and see what their what their recommendation is. Real quick, too, there's a bond issuance on the CRA uh, area in certain areas. So, uh, and the city has to make payments on that every year. And if uh, the, the money that was used to purchase the Noriega Point property uh, is a different pot of money, and there's different restrictions on it, so. That, that also requires some legal analysis on that, too, because you'd have to get this, uh, whatever entity uh, gave the city the money. I, I think it's one of the DEP entities would have to sign off on including that in the CRA also. And that, and that was all of our motions that, uh, that we made. And, and to add to that, you know, whatever, I understand there's a lot to look at that, but you know, we were a part of it. We, you know, I'm, I'm not taking anything from the parks advisory panel or the, or the department, but we were part of that the whole way through and, and, and helped, helped give guidance. So that's why we asked if it be part of our purview. So, but that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, you, on the recommendations that were made here um, tonight that, you know, and the one issue about the, trying to bring in somebody to take a look at the legal aspect of the of the uh, uh, repairing rights there or whatever it is um, you know I, I do know that we've taken that up here um, um, it's been vetted it's been voted on um, uh, it's up to y'all but everything that I've heard tonight here doesn't sound too bad to me other than trying to take that up again which you know I, if you want to that's up to the to the board here you certainly can but uh, uh, just let your feelings be known please I mean I'd, I'd make a motion that and I, I don't know how many was there seven nine. nine okay so the first seven I think we agreed on so I I'd make a motion that we accept motion or recommendations one through seven um, by the board I'll second that motion, but I'd like to add something to it, uh, Mr. Over here, if you don't mind. Uh, it's, since it's been brought up, it, Parks and Recreation uh, Committee and the Parks and Recreation Department need to be involved in this very extensively, especially the uh, Royal Melvin Park and possibly Noriega Point. Mr. Buckingham brought up a, a good point. What are they there for? Uh, basically, you're there for the entire Harbor District of, of of everything not just concentrating on one park or something like that and I think that's where some of the problems seem to lie it looks like right now everybody's concentrating on that one particular piece of property and not looking at the entire CRA as a whole because that's pretty much what I've been listening to is mostly about Royal Melbourne Park and not any of the other parts of the Harbor CRA that uh, come come under address uh, and take for instance uh, you know some of the other stuff that's being built down there and that includes the north side of the highway uh, besides just the harbor itself because I think the district goes all the way to Pine Street uh, down Calhoun and then I believe it goes all the way and melds into the town center CRA so I would, would like that the uh, uh, advisory board please also concentrate on the other areas of the CRA that's the basic reason that's the basic reason you are you are our eyes and ears for the entire harbor CRA district just as the uh, board for the uh, town center is and so uh, like I said the only thing that that I can see that we need to do is basically make sure that parks and recreation because if it is a park a parks and recreation committee and the parks and recreation department need to be uh, on board and uh, also be able to make their recommendations also but I will second the motion if that's what it needs okay mr. green go ahead uh, again I'm not downing the parks and recreational or their advisory committee I, I understand that that but this is our work plan this has been in our hands for the last 10 years or since the conception of it so you know while it is a park and it is in Destin it's also in the Harbor District and it's supposed to be the gateway to the Harbor so you know I I don't know of anything else that we're I mean we, we've everything that's come before our plate in the last six months we have knocked down with a hammer lively vessels mobile vending now this park so i mean give me something else to do i'll do it i hope this is the last time we have to talk about the royal melvin heritage park but on okay. this end but All right. but I as it is that. this is this is our this is this is our work plan mr buckingham 
Yes, Mr. Marler, just so you do understand, this is what has been brought to us in the last 10 years. What you hear from us and what you see in our minutes are what staff brings to us to work on. We would love to work on more areas in the harbor. We would love to do it. But this is what we've been brought to us to work on. That's why you're hearing so much from us. Thank okay, you. well, in that case, I will get with the city manager and make sure that uh, the staff gets other other things to you that, that they do can, because I've heard several people talk to me about other things in the Harbor District they, they have questions about and they want, to, they want answers. And so I'll make sure that y'all get that. All right, Mr. Morgan, and we're going to wrap it up. Thank you. I, I'll support this, but I, I said this at our last joint meeting. This uh, hopefully you all have accomplished all your concerns and we've now addressed them. I'm not sending this back. I want us to send it out to bid, see or see how much money it's going to cost from Tetra Tech, approve it, get the changes made and vote on this part because I'm tired of talking about it. Thanks. Me too. And, and thank you all very much for your work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So basically, we're going to go down the list here. Mr. Braden, anything else? Um, you have a couple things. Um, City Manager, when you uh, get us a copy of those plans, whatever it was that was submitted on this park, we also make sure that they get a, a copy of it as well. This board gets a copy of it. Um, and the funds, the amount of funds that we're going to get an answer on has been, sent on the, has been spent on the design of this park. I'd also like to know where those funds have came from to pay for these, the design of it. Um, and can somebody tell me why Plaza is on the end of this park? Royal Melbourne Heritage Park and Plaza. I will get you the answer to those questions. And just to clarify, I'm going to bring that back to the council meeting on the 5th. And I, I forgot we had two, two separate groups here, so that I'll make sure they are here for that council meeting. Thank you. That's all I have to do. All right. All right. I got nothing. Go ahead, Mr. Obadir. Mr. Marler. Destin. Okay. Mr. Morgan. All right. Uh, Mr. Buckingham. Anything else? Huh? Tuffy, we had a motion and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a motion on the table. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Move it to Okay, I'm sorry. Not used to this. All right, um, we get, huh? Abstain, Mr. One abstain. Uh, Mr. Buckingham, go ahead. I'm sorry. Anything else? All right. Um, Miss Best is not here tonight. Uh, Mr. Green, anything else? Uh, just a thank you. Thank you for having us twice here. Thank you for letting us flush all this out, and we appreciate it. Thank all you. right, Ms. Rank. A couple of comments here. Uh, we're an advisory committee, as you well know, as I, you've, you've all expressed it, and we appreciate that. There's a wealth of commitment. There's a wealth of ability and heart on this committee. I think it's important that you see this, and I think you're seeing it today. We know that the staff is much less than it was. I've been on this committee in my 15th year. Uh, it's interesting to know that we are a tool for the city's commitment of what they want to get done, and we're trying to make the job easier for you, and I think that's important. And as I say, the one last thing I want to say, the keystone to this city is that park, and I feel like it's very important. It, it's been something that I've held close to my heart, and I think the public does too, and we want to see it done. And thank you for your expeditious activity. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Jones. I'd like to say I appreciate the opportunity to serve the public. Thank you all for serving as well. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Trammell's not here. Ms. Mazel, do you have anything you'd like to say tonight? Thank you. All right, what about any comments from the public? Anything from the public? Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Patty DeFrenza, taxpayer, citizen of Destin. Um, I listened to the format, and the grant is a specific amount. So my question is uh, to the fire district chair, Mr. Rick Moore. Uh, with their third fire station, have you determined a cost for that, and how much would that deduct 
from the balance of the available funds to redevelop the park. I, 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 Secondly, can the citizens come to the city and the Destin Fire Control District meeting on the CRA plans and comment? And uh, I would hope that if there is a third fire station planned and approved, that there is a bay created for future use for advanced life support ambulances for the citizens and visitors of Destin. Um, as far as the uh, requirements for the grant, I believe that a reasonable material change that would benefit the public safety and would benefit tourists as well. So you're staying in the parameters. <laughs> Anyway, I'd like to know the cost of the third fire station and how much that would deduct from the available funds from the grant. One of the things um, I will tell you, Ms. Uh, DeFrenza, is that um, the, fi the, the fire district, if we allowed them to build a small fire station there, the fire district would be solely responsible for building that fire station on their own dime. The city would not put a nickel into that project. So, and that's my opinion of it, is that the only thing we would allow them to do, and it would be some sort of a lease or some kind, would be allow them to, to build it there if it's even allowable. And from that point, we, are, we would not put any money towards, the city would not put any money towards the fire station. So, right, but the city and the fire protection district are two separate entities. Yes. So inevitably, it's us, the citizens and taxpayers, that will be footing the bill. So I would like to know how much, since they have a plan, uh, how much this fire station is proposed to cost. Mr. Buckingham, do you have the answer? I, I, okay. I got, what, hold on, we're getting, we're getting a little bit off base. Go ahead, go ahead and answer the question if you know it. Um, I'll be honest with you, if you'd be more than welcome to come to our next meeting and we'll Thank discuss you. this for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. I, and, and I don't know, I, or I'd say, but I haven't heard a number or anything yet. So I, I do not know how much it's going to cost. Or anything. Okay. So, Thank you very but, much, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We're going to stand adjourned for 10 minutes and let everybody take a break. And then we'll be back 10 minutes for the regular scheduled meeting. <laughs>